Los Ángeles. Allez, mon poulet. Allez, mon poulet. Hi, everyone. Um, Tom, can we just check if there's any injury issues? I know the other day that uh, there was um, Fritz, you had a dead leg, didn't he? But sounds like he's okay and everyone's, everyone's all right. Yeah, everyone's good. Okay. I've had Fred to knock out at the end of the game. Um, I was there, he spoke about, but he's, yeah, he's good. He was in training today. So, yeah, everyone's good to go. And um, it's sort of a slightly different week, I guess, because of the nature of the opposition. But is it exciting to have a totally different test? Obviously, you wouldn't necessarily play Chile you know, year on year or anything like that. Isn't that one of the sort of best parts of a World Cup? Oh, no, right, definitely. I mean, it's exciting for us to experience a new challenge. Um, they're, they're new to the World Cup, obviously. Uh, they've been brilliant in the matches they've played. I've been seeing that a lot with the Tier 2 nations, how well they've started matches and how they've competed. It's been impressive. And how do you see England's scrum at this point? Because we've seen so much growth in a short space of time. And obviously you talked before about the need for that. But it, it looked like from the outside, it looked like it went well against Japan. How do you appraise where the scrum is now? Look, I think um, you guys must get bored of me saying this. Look, the scrum's in, in, in a good place. Um, there's still room for improvement. So I think we've had 33 scrums so far uh, in the tournament. was the most out of any team. And we've conceded one penalty. So in that sense, it was really clean. Um, I think a step forward for us is how can we get uh, how we build more pressure of our scrum um, especially when we've, we've got teams under the pump how do we actually get a reward out of it so we'll be working hard to, hard on that in the next few weeks and uh, is there anybody um, well, the senior guys the senior sort of front rowers do they do you kind of work closely with them about how you go about the details of that, I see 100% um, like Steve does with the line up guys um, like Hilly does with the back row um, I'm working with those front row guys make sure I'm picking their brains to make sure that um, the product we put out is a shared a shared product amongst the staff and the players. And David, um, we're just thinking about being at the World Cup for you personally, with your personal journey. I mean, when you were growing up, you know, I guess you probably never thought that you'd be in this kind of position, but isn't that just one of the beauties of, of you know, global sport and rugby the way it is now that here you are with representing England at the World Cup? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's been an amazing honour and privilege to, to be here. And... Uh, yeah, I don't think I would have ever expected this a couple of years ago. Uh, starting out in a small town in Somerset West in South Africa to be playing for England is, um, has been amazing and my journey to the World Cup has uh, been full of ups and downs but it's exciting to be here. When was the f sort of first point you thought, I suppose one, that a test career with England would be a reality for you and then two, the World Cup might be a, a genuine ambition as well? I think sort of ever since I arrived in Northampton it made me feel so at home here and um, I wanted to make England my home. Um, had some good chats with Eddie over the years and then with Steve coming in it's, uh, it's been brilliant so to be part of this England setup is really special and I've loved every moment and then obviously with my move um, away from England you know, I wasn't sure about the World Cup but had some good chats with Steve and um, yeah he just assured me that you know have a good pre-season and um, you know I'm up for selection and um, it's brilliant to be part of this team and enjoying every moment. That conversation with Steve that must have been very reassuring wasn't it because it's been such a turbulent time for rugby full stop Obviously, Jack's spoken about that before, and yeah. we know what, what the situation is. But um, you know, Steve was very clear about you know just wanting to kind of select from everyone who's available right now. And I suppose that must have kind of calmed everyone down a little bit in a very turbulent time. Yeah, I know for sure. He gave everyone loads of confidence, and he just said, you know, as long as you're training well and um, playing well in the games, you know, you'll get selected. So um, now he reassured everyone, and it's uh, it's, uh, it's great to be part of the team. And for I mean, for the future, do you just have to sort of forget about that for? I mean, I'm sure you'd love to keep playing for England after the World Cup, wouldn't you? But yeah, well, across that bridge, uh, we're focusing on Chile for now. And on that front, I mean, you know, what, what do you see from, what do you expect from Chile this weekend? Yeah, well, as Tom said, they you know they rightly deserve their place in the World Cup. Um, beating the USA twice to sort of get into the World Cup is, uh, is brilliant. And um, yeah, we're going to have to, uh, it's going to be a tough game for us. Obviously, they're going to try and 
at us physically and come after us. So I think it's important that uh, we just stick to our structure and um, hopefully we put on a good performance. David, England are obviously overwhelming favourites to win on Saturday. What's the team doing to make sure there's no complacency in this game? Because we've seen what Portugal and Uruguay have done in this tournament. Okay, they didn't win, but they played pretty well. Yeah, I think that's it's important to focus on ourselves and uh, the performance that we can produce on the day. Um, as much as we try and analyse the opposition, I think it's important that we get to play the England way, play the England structure. Um, so, yeah, we're focusing a lot on what we can do in the game and um, hopefully not let, let them distract us. Maritoje was saying how he wants to keep on playing because the guys who aren't playing are getting flogged in training. Can, can you give us a, a flavour of what that's like exactly and how much you want to play this weekend so you don't have to keep on training? Yeah, it's been a tough uh, two weeks uh, on the sideline of the fitness sessions. Uh, Willis and I can attest to that. Um, yeah, Alan obviously puts us through our paces. We've got to keep up with the team. Um, you know, they bring in the hard yards on a Saturday, so we, uh, we're busy chasing them and uh, want to get an opportunity. Um, but yeah, and obviously we're training hard. Training's been good, but there's a, there's always time for some downtime afterwards. Um, but yeah, it'll be good to get around this weekend. Sure, and just one for Tom. How do you go about sort of doing a research on the chili scrum? Uh, there mustn't be much footage out there of them. And there's a, there's a fair amount. We should lose yeah. how they played the USA in the games they'd currently played. They played the Argentina 15 in a warm up um, twice. Um, they also played in Namibia. Um, so I would review any game. Uh, full respect that we would show to any team which that they've done a full deep dive into them to get, gain uh, an understanding to best prepare the team and best prepare the scrum this weekend. So can I just ask you a little bit about Theo Dan and, and where he's at as a as a young hooker at the moment in this game? Uh, well, I think Theo is improving. Um, I think what he's got is this unique ability and this power he has in you see it in his attack. You see it when he carries how he can how he can break tackles. Um, I think he's working hard with Jamie and, and other members of the squad to make sure he improves the areas he needs to, to do to be a hooker for England in terms of his set piece. He's working extremely hard on that. Um, and I think you're seeing someone who is wanting to be the, at the best of their game. Does it remind you of any particular hookers out there? I, I think the thing that Theo tries to do would he would study a hooker and he tries to take the best bits of each of them, like he's a unique player. Just on Theo. Uh, He's spoken himself about how much he wants to improve his line out throwing and maybe emulate what Jamie George does in that area. Can you just explain what work you guys do with him on that area? We've seen the tall ladder and all that. How much do you work on it? How often? How, can you just give us some details on that? Um, so they'll throw. So you've seen one ladder, there's actually two ladders. Um, so they are in with Steve most mornings throwing. Um, before sessions, they're throwing. Before line out session, they're throwing. Um, within a gym session, they're throwing. They get off the walk bikes, they're throwing into bins. Um, they must throw over 100 to 150 throws a week in training, let alone a game. So he's doing a lot of work there. And is his sort of USP, the stuff we saw last season of that ball carrying and that dynamism, I suppose? See it. Yeah, like I said, he's got, he's got a unique ability to break tackles. Um, and that's something that's exciting for a player who plays hooker. Uh, we, we've all been on tent hooks, waiting to find out the results of the paddle tournament. <laughs> um, can, can, can you, I don't know who wants to get the match report, but um, um, I think there might have been a fix in the draw. <laughs> um, that was rubbish. But no, <laughs> Ribbo, Ribbo fancied himself as favourite. They, they, they put taught themselves up as favourites and disappointed on the day. So yeah, was so, still slightly bitter about yeah. when I have to talk about that. Um, myself and Danny Kerr were ranked as number one pair going into the tournament. I thought me and Coley were. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, some slight uh, some issues with the court and weather <laughs> conditions and stuff obviously just didn't play in our favour. And the surprise pairing of Bib and Rod. And um, Alice, who is one of our physios, came up on top. She is an ex-pro tennis player, yeah. went to Wimbledon, I may add. Yeah. So Bev and Rob was sort of just <laughs> there and um, <laughs> did most of the negating. But fair enough, they, they came out of champs. And who did they vanquish in the final? Oh, just two hookers, wasn't there? It was uh, Wacker uh, and Theo Dan, yeah. yeah. So it was all front row fair, which is slightly worrying for the rest of the squad, <laughs> I might have meant, but yeah. But it was a good day, good day. And um, barbecue afterwards, and just, uh, it was a good sort of decompress like that after after a game like Japan where it was fairly sort of hectic at one point. 
Yeah, I think it's always good um, to socialise with each other off the field. You know, it's after a tough game like that, um, to come back and just have a, have a day to relax and just bond as a team uh, away from rugby, just form more uh, relationships and connections within the group is really powerful. Um, and a good barbecue, everyone likes a good feed uh, at the end of the day. So it, w- it was a good, uh, good social event. Uh, and, and, and just one more bit of um, housekeeping: the stat you gave about scrum. So you conceded one out of thirty-four. Did you say three? I believe. Uh, and how many of you did penalties have you won on your scrum? Um, so we have won. We have won four on our own goal, four or five. Um, but I think you'll still see a trend. And I've been spoken to the officials, and uh, the ball is coming out. In terms of teams that want to scrummage penalties, it's becoming difficult the way the the current trend is of referees. I think that's by no means if the ball's playable and the ball's playable. So what we're, what we're hearing is if it's uh, the ball's playable at the back of the scrum and the offence is not clear and obvious, then the ball will be asked to be used rather than potentially a penalty given and it being a wrong call. Um, so we're working with that to make sure that we are technically, um, I use the word technically clean so that dominance can be rewarded. And and, and this, what, what do you have to do in order for that this ensuring the scrum is upright and it's not yeah collapsed. So you'll see a lot of um, the scrums that go crowd by set and bang and they hit in. It's like a flash bang it hits the floor. If that happens, then you are inviting the referee to come in and go. Well, we'll, we'll guess. So you look back and you go, okay, uh, pre that's pre Steve coming in. The penalties that were won or lost for England were before the ball came in. Um, so you're you're putting the complete outcome of the scrum into the referee's hands or the AR's hands. And what we've worked for is get to the contest um, and then go forward in the contest. So what I mean contest is make sure the ball comes in. Uh, then we can have a contest. Then we can be judged on our performance rather than just having a 50-50. So we've worked really hard on being balanced and controlled in our setup to allow us to have a good engagement and then go to work in the contest. Uh, so, so just one, one more of that. How, how difficult is that if the other team is out to maybe sort of bring it down. So that's where we'll have to we have to train different scenarios to make sure that we're balanced in what we do, so that we can remove. Um, I use this in a respectful manner, remove the referee from being forced to uh, potentially not make a decision that's one hundred percent because he's only refereeing what he sees. Um, so making sure that we are te- technically clean, um, so that we can win penalties. Christian from David. You are in France, and after the World Cup, you will stay in France. When you decided to sign your contract for Toulon, is it difficult for you to accept the eligibility rules of um, English Federation? And uh, do you hope the rules will change in a few months? Or oh, it's a old dream, impossible dream? Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, when I signed for, for Toulon, the rules were in place, and the rules, rules will, will remain in place. Um, so it was a decision I had to make. Um, unfortunately, England was no longer available. Um, yeah, obviously, we're really looking forward to that challenge, but for now, I'm focusing all on England and a uh, big part of this World Cup and seeing how far we can go with the team. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, that, that should be the end of the road for now. And do you think that the rules can change in, in a few months? It's up to the RFU. There have to be some conversations had, and we'll see, but for now, the rules are the way they are. Yes, go yeah. um, David, just on the on the scrum, that's a great appreciate. Thanks very much for that explanation. And that's really helpful. It, it, and Tom's spoken before about sort of being clean in that way, and showing those sort of pictures to the referee. I mean, as a pack, um, how helpful is that as a as a plan? Because it definitely seems like it's giving you headway, and um, and and also the fans want to see contests as well in the scrum, don't they? And I assume players want the contest as well. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, that stat was pretty damaging when we sort of came in and Tom sort of told us about that, about where our scrum was going. So, we, as he said, we've worked incredibly hard over the pre-season and Six Nations has been building all along and to sort of get into this contest. Um, and I think it's sort of, it's improving week on week and I think everyone can see that our scrum is um, becoming a bit of a dominant force and we continue to improve that. Um, and like I said, I think if we can stay off the ground long enough, then hopefully... Um, decisions will start coming away we can maybe start getting a few more penalties 
but overall we're sort of just applying pressure to the opposition um, you know get clean ball for our backs because they're deadly when they get the ball so um, yeah uh, it's, um, it's going in the right direction thanks all thank you thanks,